Michael Houlihan drove to the far end of the Piggly Wiggly parking lot in Columbia, South Carolina. That's what he did in every parking lot, and it's what all good salespeople do. Park as far away as they can. The spots by the door are for customers. Store managers notice the courtesy. It was mid-May. The sky loomed thick and close, a dark, steely, greenish gray. Michael didn't so much see the clouds as feel them, hot, heavy, and steamy. It was the kind of day that discourages movement. Ah, spring in the American South. Michael is a tall man, six foot two, a bit gangly, with reddish hair and an air that says he spent some time on a surfboard. He was wearing a dark suit, carrying barefoot wine samples in a bag over his shoulder, and holding a large foam core sign with a five foot tall purple foot. This was not a guy they saw every day at the Piggly Wiggly. When Michael had driven up, a dark-haired teenager was collecting stray shopping carts and wheeling them back to the store. By the time Michael started lugging his wine and sign across the 30-yard lot, the kid had abandoned his carts and was sprinting for the supermarket door. Hey, buddy, you better run. Say what? Run? Michael looked left and right. All he saw were parked cars. Did he hear the kid right? Then... Boom! The thunderclap almost knocked him over. Michael felt it in his spine. Whoa, what was that? He stood there, shaking it off. Maybe five seconds later, it began to rain. Not gentle, soothing, wimpy spring rain like he knew in Northern California. This was rain from a fire hose or a falling river. Buckets and buckets in seconds. Drops that fell like walnuts. (sighs) Got it. In seconds, his suit was soaked. His tie was soaked. His shoes and socks and pockets filled with water. He started running for the store. Then came the wind. Huge, uneven blasts blowing hard from the left, then hard from the right. Michael's sign turned into a sail. It yanked him west halfway across the parking lot. Then it pulled him east. Then another gust pulled him west again. He was hanging on, figuring if he let go, the sign would land in Georgia. Left, right, lurch, wobble. Just don't let go. Inside the store, people had stopped. No one was checking out or bagging groceries or moving. They were watching this tall, fair-haired, California-looking guy in a suit, getting hammered by rain and staggering back and forth, wrestling with a giant purple foot. He disappeared out of view for a moment, then reappeared and heaved off in the other direction. He was barely making progress towards the door. The whole show took maybe four minutes. Michael tottered into the store through the automatic doors, and just stood there for a second, catching his breath. He was leaking water onto the floor like a broken barrel. He looked up. The whole store, the shoppers, the clerks, the bag boys, the kid who'd been pushing carts stared at him wide-eyed. No one moved, just people staring. Michael stared back, dazed and dripping. That was the only sound, the dripping. No cash registers, no rustling, no chatter, just drip, drip, drip. Above them, out of the ceiling, that supermarket mechanical voice broke in. Wet mop, up front. A few seconds later, the store manager, a tall man with a southern gentleman's manner, walked up to Michael. Son, I know you have something to sell me, and I know you want to sell it real bad. Yes, sir, I do. 